God, we all stand up as we read the word of God. We're going to read from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 16, just verse 7 this morning. These are the words of Jesus Christ that he speaks to his apostles, his disciples, telling them that he would be leaving the earth. But even as he leaves the earth, he tells them something much better would take place. That's why he says in John chapter 16 verse 7, let us all join together and read this verse. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And you may be seated. I want to thank God for sending the helper 2,000 years ago. Jesus Christ went up to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit who dwells inside each and every one of you are born again and have accepted him and his power is overshadowing all those who are baptized in the spirit of God when he said this to them it almost looked like they're going to lose the most precious gift the most important person in their life they're going to lose God and being in his presence that is why I had to first emphasize saying nevertheless I tell you the truth because it did not seem like it is a truth when he said it is to your advantage that I go away and that I'm leaving but the words of Jesus are true unfortunately sometimes he has to emphasize this and all those who do not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit to listen you should listen to these words in John chapter 16 verse 7 that Jesus is speaking the truth that's why he emphasizes and says nevertheless I tell you the truth it is not an option it's not a suggestion that he gives saying if you want to and lightly says the Holy Spirit will come after I leave because many are stuck still in what happened 2,000 years ago they stuck with Jesus because he's a human being that they can relate to that is why we are focusing on being led by the Spirit of God being a church which has the Holy Spirit as God not just looking unto Jesus who came and left 2,000 years ago and he's seated at the right hand of God the Father and the God of the church is the Spirit of God and many find it difficult to accept and accommodate that and believe in that truth that's why I say nevertheless I tell you the truth Throughout his ministry, many would not accept it. When he told that they got to take part in his body and drink of his blood, they would not believe. That's why he says again in John chapter 8, verse 45 onwards, because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Even right then and there, when he was there, there were people who rejected it. Again, he says in verse 46, and if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? We as Christians and those who live here on earth, you've got to renew your mind with this truth. That God has sent his Holy Spirit and you definitely need to have him in your life, in your heart, inside your physical body for you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells inside of you and he overshadows you. He fills you with his power. Many come and receive a little bit and then they feel that is enough a little of the darkness and the oppression and the bondage and the chain breaks and then after that they stop receiving that's not how we can get it completely we've got to press in and ensure that the cup is overflowing not just be able to sing one song or two songs and then after that get tired we need spiritual stamina and strength you need to have the maturity and the capacity to keep pressing on throughout the service to keep your attention to keep receiving and not disconnect after a few songs saying oh I'm tired that's why you've got to prepare the previous day you got to give your body the rest that it needs so that Sunday morning or any other service that you come, you can receive from him. 
because physically you're exhausted and tired you cannot even stand you cannot even open your mouth you cannot even clap your hands then you will fail to receive what God has got for you because using that physical body is how we receive without using it without singing without giving to God we cannot get back give and it will be given unto you he said open your mouth wide and I will fill it but many find it difficult to sing even one song or beyond that then after a few songs just give up and say okay that is enough just phase out it's like too much it's like a small little baby cannot eat beyond a point but as a baby grows you got to develop an appetite and those who are into competitive sports they've got to be able to eat a well-balanced nutritional diet not just three times a day they might have to eat even five times a day six times a day they plan and schedule their meals how they're going to eat when they're going to eat according to the clock before they start the workout after they start immediately what are they going to do there is a window that they believe that they're going to give the protein supplement that is needed for the muscles to grow and then what they need to eat before going to bed what they need to eat when they get up there are some people who set an alarm and get up at middle of the night because they feel that the hard work that they did will fade away if they do not feed their body the nutrition that it needs to grow but how are we growing in the Lord Jesus Christ what effort what dedication what discipline do we have a disciple is the one who has discipline and discipline sometimes takes sacrifice it takes a lot of effort it takes pushing through it takes giving up it takes sticking to that schedule to the time now is the time this is the hour this is the day I will not let it go by I will grab this what God has got in store for me what he's giving now at this moment I will receive from him so many times when we fail to receive at that moment then we will not have that ability to have victory in the things that would take place very soon shortly after that so many times I've been woken up by the Holy Spirit even before the alarm or at odd hours and odd times and if I respond then I receive the power because very soon after that I'm going to be tested it could even be before the break of day it could be any other time but if I say oh it is not yet three o'clock in the morning what is this word this is just half an hour ago I went to sleep now the Holy Spirit is saying get up and pray get up and sing get up and worship get up get ready why because he knows what the devil and the enemy is trying to do and he's training us to listen to him and to be prepared so that that day and in that season we'll overcome that is why he's emphasizing the truth and letting them know here he's a God of truth he's never told a lie he never speaks lies it is impossible for Jesus and for God to speak lie but unfortunately he has to emphasize and tell because many Christians do not believe the Bible they want to take a little bit here and there and they think it is something that is not completely the truth but each and every one of you here know that this is the complete truth and the whole truth how many believe that lift up your Bible and say I believe in the Word of God that it is the truth and the complete truth I accept it I receive it I live by it and he's telling them he's departing for a good reason because it looks like unto them that he came and now he's going to leave maybe because he doesn't like them maybe because he's finished his work for any kind for any number of reasons that's why he's saying it is your advantage that I'm leaving not for any other reason because Jesus physically cannot merge with his apostles it is impossible for him with a physical body to enter into Peter or enter into John and give them that ability that power to transform their mind and transform their body to fill their spirit when he was there with them through him they received many miracles signs and wonders counsel and advice 
but still there was no deep internal transformation in any one of them they were here and they're able to do good but you don't know when they will say something when they will do something wrong when they will fall they do not have the power or the capacity that's how we will be if we stop at being just born again that's how we will be if we stop at just getting baptized in water that is not the end you got to be baptized in the holy spirit that is why he had to leave because if he was here or not many will just flock around him they just want to follow and but still they will be doing things which are not right we can see in the life of one person this morning how though he was right there very close to jesus still he was not able to do what needs to be done even now many christians saying i wish i was there when jesus walked on earth 2000 years ago i wish i was able to go there and be there with him how privileged peter james and john were to be with him and see him and touch him and travel with him and eat with him and literally live with him for three and a half years if that's how your thought is then you are having a mind which is not renewed in christ jesus you're not living you're not thinking the truth because jesus is the one who said it is to your advantage that i depart because you're right now in the best situation in the best position with the holy spirit being poured out how many believe that hallelujah it is better than when jesus was because jesus can maybe walk with you live inside your house but he will not be able to enter inside your physical body and transform your mind and transform your body and transform and strengthen your spirit for that you need the holy spirit now you understand how important it is for the holy spirit to enter and dwell inside of you because he is the spirit he is able to do that if he had a body a physical body he will not be able to do that if you don't believe it why don't you try to put your hand inside the person next to you sitting next to you not try to see if it goes inside their flesh poke them if they're sleeping definitely try to push it push their shoulder and see if it is going inside push it inside the head and say let i want to change your thinking if it's your husband or your wife say i want to change your thinking you're thinking wrong I want you to think clear it. Maybe put the finger and say I want you to love me more. Wife, I want you to love me more, husband. But all that is not possible. God wanted us to love him but he could not make it happen. But when the Holy Spirit came, he stirred up a love in son and made the heart of stone into heart of flesh. That's why receive him and live in him. How important it is to accept and receive and live in the Holy Spirit and receive his power. And not only for this reason, but if he does not go away, then we would have not been able to receive the helper. That's what he says in John chapter 16, verse 7. If I do not go away, the helper will not be able to come to you. Why? He came as a high priest. Hebrews 9:11 says. of the good things to come the reason that jesus came is not just so that he can be the savior not so that he can just do good things in his time on earth it is for the good things to come what are the good things what the spirit of god what the holy spirit is doing for the past 2000 years in the church and in your life he set the stage he prepared everything that is why jesus came not just so that he can carry the cross not so that he can just finish his work on the cross but he did all of that why so that after he leaves he prepared everything so that you will be able to receive the holy spirit how sad it is when people just stop at jesus and fail to receive the holy spirit for which reason jesus came that is why it says in hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 christ came as a high priest of the good things to come and he entered with his own blood the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption he had to become head over all he had to redeem you the devil took all of humanity that those who died would not even be able to go and live with god till jesus rose from the dead 
they were there in a place called paradise it was not hell that's why Jesus even tells that criminal on the cross today you will be with me in paradise not in heaven with God the Father but because of the work on the cross and that was not the only thing that he had to do he had to break through the Bible says in John chapter 20 verse 17 that Jesus said to Mary do not cling to me for I have not yet ascended to my father though he rose from the grave though he went and preached to those that were there the lowest parts of the earth he had to still ascend go with his own blood and enter into the holy of holies that's why Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give to you the spirit the spirit of wisdom the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him you're born again knowing that truth that is because the Holy Spirit convicted you and convinced you without the power of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit being here on earth none of us would have been able to get saved especially we who are Gentiles who are not a people of God who are not chosen by God but when he entered he was able to redeem us take us away from death and from hell that's why it says he led captivity captive took them all to heaven broke through and gave gifts to men the biggest gift the most important gift is the gift of the Holy Spirit for us in this dispensation and you've got to receive it if you do not have it then you're living a life which is not complete why that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling anytime you feel hopeless it means that you're not in the spirit the Holy Spirit is not allowed into your life he wants to give you hope he's called each and every one of you to that glorious call every one of you here tap the person next to you and say you have a glorious call a glorious call like nothing else on earth there's no job on earth no person on earth who can replace that call that God has got for you but if at any time you feel like oh what is this life what is this happening all around it is because you are not filled with the Holy Spirit you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit and you're not yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit because you stop the Spirit of God and you quenched him that is why he's not able to give you that hope that you need for what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints the riches he's got riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints you have got into a great inheritance Jesus died and he made a way for you to inherit it all that is there what is that what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places Jesus had to get all these things done be raised from the dead and to be seated at the right hand in the heaven far above all principalities and power and might and dominion in every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come he went and he sat there the right hand of God the Father on his throne in heaven because in him and through him you rule and reign with Christ Jesus as you're filled with the Spirit of God right here on earth you physically might be here on earth but you're seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus and when you're there in the Spirit what happens you're exalted above all of that and you have hope in the calling that he's called you with you understand the riches of his glory you should feel like you can do anything you should feel like 
there is nothing impossible there is no limits to my life you should step out and launch out you got to step out of the boat and walk on the water not reject and not say oh what about me oh what about my children what about their future what is going to happen there is a lack of faith but you got to go ahead and proceed with faith because you are seated in Christ Jesus and there is no darkness no devil no principality no power that can come against you because they are under your feet and he's put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church not for himself but gave him to be head over all things to the church to each and every one of you which is his body and the fullness of him who fills all things in all so revelation chapter 1 verse 4 it says that john is writing to the seven churches about jesus christ the first born from the dead he broke through the first one who took all the others who were dead till then and they were resurrected and they went to be with god in heaven to him who loved us and washed our sins in his own blood and made us kings and priests to his god and father he had to do all of this after doing all of that is when the holy spirit can come that's why i said in john chapter 16 verse 7 if i do not go away and do all of these list of things that i just read to you then the help of the holy spirit could not come you need to be first washed with the blood of jesus make it a point to use the blood of jesus every morning and every night and all the times that you need for there is victory in the blood of jesus amen shake the person next to you and say use the blood of jesus tell them say the blood of jesus as victory tell them say the blood of jesus as victory tell them because many people feel very uncomfortable talking and telling about the blood of jesus saying oh lord apply your blood on me apply the blood of jesus on myself cleanse me lord with your blood wash me with your blood they not come to that they think oh it's well hope no one is listening to me but at least do it inside your house in a locked room or every day say in the blood of jesus i am cleansed the blood of jesus has cleansed me wash me lord jesus with your blood then the hold of the devil will be broken over your life many do not know the trickery with which the devil comes and binds them with a hook dragging them putting them in bondage oppressing giving a hopeless feeling removing all faith feeling unnecessary pressure that is the time you got to apply the blood of jesus hallelujah apply the blood of jesus in the morning just have to say it get up in the morning say jesus wash me with your blood Why don't you all repeat in practice so every day you can do it everybody here say jesus wash me with your blood cleanse me with your blood forgive me of all my sins that's how you pray and start your prayer because then you're cleansed and then god can come and operate and function and work in you god and sin cannot go together God cannot live in someone who has sin inside of them. That is why you got to get yourself cleansed. Get up in the morning and apply the blood on Jesus on every one of you, on everything that is there. Because I live in a place which the neighbors call as this is a haunted place. Have you seen that spirit walking? They ask me. So you got to cover everything in the blood of Jesus. Apply it all over. Top of the house to all around the house to the neighborhood to the entire state to the entire nation to the entire city to all the world. So the hold of the devil would be broken. Need in every room and everything. 
The Bible says everything is cleansed by the blood. Everything is purified by the blood. You got to know the power in the blood of Jesus. If I say something, you might find it very strange. I used to apply the blood of Jesus all over the house, every room, up and down, up on the neighbors, up on their homes, break every hold of the devil over their life. Then there was one place I was not applying because I didn't notice it. Because under the staircase, there was a small room which I did not realize was there. But then when I knew it, I was able to see that from that place, there was darkness that was manifesting. You might not accept it or believe in it or receive in it, but I could say that one spot. So much so that darkness leans over the wall from some other place into the house to see. Many come to hunt and to kill and to finish, but cannot step into the house, so they're so tall. Almost up to the ceiling, but only the body comes out of the wall to see over me as I'm lying down in bed. So I'm watching and it's watching saying, who's this guy? Why is he doing all of this? How come he's not dying? What is happening? But they cannot step into what is washed with the blood of Jesus. The devil will have no hold when he cleansed it and purified it and sanctified it with the blood of Jesus. That's what it says here in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. John writes and says to the seven churches, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. To him who loved us because of his love is why he washed us from our sins in his own blood. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. The priest who enters in the tabernacle if you want to enter into the presence of God. The very first altar is a brazen altar, the altar of sacrifice where animal sacrifices were given and you cannot enter the kingdom of God except through the cross and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Though the high priest had the calling, he cannot just walk in to the inner court and go into the holy of holies. He had to first come and offer sacrifice for his sins. And when you do that, you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus says here again, John chapter 16 verse 7, If I depart, I will send him to you. And he's been sending not just once the Holy Spirit, he is here, but at every time you worship and come to the house of God, constantly all through, you know, someone prays for you. When we all get together on a Friday morning and pray for all of you, not come. You want me to repeat that? When we get together on Friday morning and pray for all of you, not come saying, Oh Lord, bring them all on Sunday morning. The Holy Spirit comes and knocks on the door of your heart and say, Brother, sister, get ready and come this Sunday morning. The same way when you pray for someone else, then the Spirit of God goes and convicts and convinces them so that they will feel a nudge, they will feel that they need to connect with God. When we pray to Jesus, say, Oh Lord, touch this brother, touch that sister. What happens? I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to that person. That's what Jesus is saying. Psalm 104 verse 30 says, You send forth your spirit and they are created. The so Holy Spirit comes, but you've got to at every time accept. Heal yourself and flow with the Spirit. Say, Flow! You to move the spirit. That's how an eagle flies. That's how the Bible speaks again and again about eagle. It has to wait for the wind. And when the wind blows, it spreads out its wings and lets the wind carry it. You've got to know how the spirit of God leads. You've got to allow him to lead you. And then you will get many things happening in your life. That's why he says you send forth your spirit and they are created and he renew the face of the earth. He renews it. He changes your life. But not everyone accept and receive it. Look at the parable that Jesus says about the kingdom of God. About how the Holy Spirit is sent again and again to nudge you, to motivate you, to encourage you, to 
exhort you to connect with him and worship him to pray to him wake you up in the middle of the night and not able to go to sleep you got to don't scratch your head and go ran, ransack the refrigerator or take the phone immediately and start doing something and checking all the notification no put that phone down turn it upside down and definitely don't go watch the tv don't get into some other activity immediately connect with the lord jesus christ and tell you i'll write it and give it to you you come for sunday to sunday praise and worship that next monday the holy spirit will wake you up how many felt that coming for one week and then you felt something happening on the monday morning the spirit of god comes and he wants to take you he doesn't want to drop you and leave you and go but you got to yield yourself you got to spend the time you got to allow him to shape you and mold you and to create you and to renew all that is there in your life and strengthen and transform you amen that's what jesus says in matthew chapter 22 verse 2 The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. So he sends out his servant to call all. The Holy Spirit is not a servant, but he is God. But he comes as God sends him again and again. But what happens here in this parable? He sends out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, but they were not willing to come. not willing to leave that bed leave that pillow leave that mattress especially now some people in chennai feel it's very cool and they find it difficult to get up and come feel the ac is very hot here i tell you you run around and jump around and scream and shout and clap your hands so hard you'll start sweating you'll say let the temperature get down even lower but you're just going to sit on quietly and still then you'll need some shawls and some sweaters and definitely hopefully it keeps you awake and they were not willing to come so again he sent out other servants saying tell those who are invited see i have prepared my dinner my oxen and my fatted calf are killed and all things are ready he's now trying to motivate them saying see the feast is there look at this amazing dinner that he prepared for them come to the wedding what do they do matthew 22 verse 5 all those who did not come last friday read that 22 verse 5 for here in chennai and they did not come stand up on the chair and read this verse matthew 22 verse 5 and they made light of it and went their ways one to his own farm another to his business and the rest what did they do they were even more worse they seized his servants and treated them spitefully and killed them but when the king heard about it he was furious and he sent out his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city then he said to his servants the wedding is ready but those who were invited were not worthy therefore go into the highways and as many as you find invite to the wedding so those servants went out on the highways again they going You cannot get tired about praying for others. Keep praying every day for the people in your life. Keep praying for the people of this city, this nation and the world. God will listen to your prayers. God will listen to your prayers. He is answering. He is listening and things are happening in this city, in this nation and all the earth. He is transforming this place. He is speaking to people. He is delivering them. So he sends those servants who went out into the highways and gathered together all those they found both good and bad and the wedding hall was filled with guests you got to go and get people that there's not even a single empty chair in the house of god because we are gathering here to celebrate the victory of jesus christ and the greatness of the king is in the multitude of people who praise and worship him and for that you got to know how to listen to the holy spirit many will say if jesus tells i listen maybe he'll walk and tell me then i will do this but now this is the age of the holy spirit and the apostles and the disciples knew 
that they need to listen to the spirit and Jesus himself tells all the seven churches when he writes to them in the book of Revelation listen to what the spirit says to the churches he who has a ear let him listen to what the Holy Spirit says therefore you need to have that ear and develop it to listen to the Holy Spirit of God here see in first Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 the Apostle is writing saying now the Spirit expressly says he was able to hear and understand and could feel the intensity could feel the depth of that statement not just spirit saying lightly but the emphasis expressly saying you could feel that the Holy Spirit is saying come on this is important this will happen very clearly having no doubt at all about what the Holy Spirit is saying about what will happen what is going to come to pass you got to listen to the Spirit of God then things will be unlocked in your life He'll tell you what you need to do. Some things will be supernatural, some things will be in the natural, but you've got to listen to him. You cannot blindly try something. Because someone else did it, they did it, let me try. What do you want me to do, Lord? This is how you've got to ask him. What do you want me to do specifically in my life? And he will tell you, it is in obedience that a miracle takes place. That is how you receive. Many wonder how to receive the power of God. How to make the power manifest how to release the power in their life it is listening to the spirit of god and you do even if it is silly you got to do it even if it is hard you got to do it when jesus says come he asked peter asked jesus lord if it is you let command me to come on the water and when jesus said come he stepped out and the other apostles though they did not take that step of faith nor did they take that step of action to ask god at least they were wise in staying back they didn't say he told peter so let me also jump into the water they might have drowned you got to know what god wants you to do in your life he walked on water doesn't mean that every day he walked on water there are times he used the boat there are more times he used the boat and natural physical thing and few times he walked on water you got to know when to do what in your life how to go through that problem you got to sit down and say God tell me what I need to do to remove this mountain blocking my way what is that you want me to do I need to hear clearly from you he will speak to you he will reveal to you hallelujah that's why he says the spirit expressly says that is why Jesus wants to give you that advantage of God himself dwelling inside each and every one of you God himself guiding you and leading you each and every person millions of people billions of people everyone having the spirit of god inside and having a, a direct wonderful communion and relationship with him hearing his voice if jesus was here physically on earth he can be in only in one location at a time he's limited to the number of people that he can connect and lead and guide but the holy spirit is everywhere how sad it is when people are just stuck with jesus and churches are stuck with Jesus and they reject the Holy Spirit and they reject this advantage do you have that advantage is a question that I want to ask this morning Jesus wants to give you that advantage in your life the advantage over the devil the advantage over your problems advantage over your peers when you have the Holy Spirit you will be able to go through and get out of any kind of situation advantage over things of the world none of the natural things none of the anything in the world can overcome you when the holy spirit is there in you and you listen to what he says and you do what he says you will have an advantage over all things of the earth you will have advantage over any enemy whether it's the devil or any human being who comes against you you'll have advantage over your own self the problem with many people face is not an external problem first they can't get their mind to work together they cannot get their body to work together they're not all coordinated the body doesn't listen the mind doesn't listen it doesn't get up it doesn't move it doesn't do what needs to be done the physical fallen body seems to have more power than the person the physical corrupted mind seems to have more power than the spirit over the life of that person 
The body tells what they do, when they get up, where they go, what they eat, how they eat, they keep on eating. Or they don't eat at all. Or the mind keeps on going somewhere, should not go. Facing a tormented series of thoughts, feeling agitated, all kinds of mental oppressions of the devil. But when the Holy Spirit is there, you will have advantage over your own mind and over your own body. You'll be able to transform it. And the Holy Spirit is more advantageous than even having Jesus. Many will consider this to be a sacrilegious statement or almost heretical. The Holy Spirit is more advantageous than Jesus. I'm not cancelling Jesus. But these are the words of Jesus Christ himself. That's why he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Live by this truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Look at just the life of Peter. Peter before the water baptism and Peter before the baptism of the Holy Spirit and Peter after the Holy Spirit baptism. How there is a change and transformation in his life. Just a few verses ahead in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 said, You are the Son of God. And Jesus looked at him and told, Flesh and blood cannot reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven who has revealed this to you. He heard God the Father speaking to him and all the others were not able to tell who Jesus was. Who do men say that I am? He asked them and they were all just staring at each other. None of them heard. They were disciples, they were following, they were with Jesus. They were the chosen apostles, but they till, did not hear. But somehow he heard. Maybe they heard and they did not speak. All, some of them are silent always. Twelve apostles, you hear only a few of them. The others all had a mouth, I do not know. Maybe they were incapable, physically challenged to speak. Not one word some of those apostles have said. All the four Gospels, like some people in the church, never hear them singing, never heard the voice, don't know if they have a voice, you want me to pray for your voice, or do you want to have some hot cup of tea every service before it starts, maybe some strepsils or need some vocal training. How many have a voice? In for that, only few says amen. But here, after saying those wonderful words to Jesus, he now, when Jesus tells him, I've got to go to the cross and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and be killed and be raised the third day, what happens? He suddenly starts listening to the devil. Matthew chapter 16, verse 22, it says, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. He's Jesus is telling them what is going to happen in his ministry and here comes Peter and he takes Jesus away from the apostles. Takes him aside and says, Lord, it should not happen to you. He starts rebuking Jesus. He's saying, no, this should not happen to you. You shouldn't go to the cross. What are you talking about? He's literally shouting at Jesus. And so again, Jesus now, let's go of Peter and he turns and then he... He is the one who listened to the devil at that time. You got to know. Peter didn't know at that time. He didn't have the anointing and the Holy Spirit dwelling inside to know what these words are and where the source is from. But you can have people in your life. You got to know what words they're giving, where it is from, who is it from. If you do not, imagine Jesus listened to Peter saying, Oh, how lovely my close buddy Peter saying, I shouldn't do this. He loves me took me aside and gave me some good counsel. He said, okay, okay, I won't do. Yeah, you tell me whatever, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Come, come, let's go to the house, cancel all this. Let's stick to your plan. Let's do whatever the world does. Go here, go there. Then there would be no cross, there would be no crucifixion, then none of us would be here, most of us would be dead by now. And definitely we will not make it into heaven. We listened to the devil at that time. Here again, he was sleeping when Jesus told him specifically, wait. 
Watch with me. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 40, he comes and he sees them sleeping three times. Woke them up. Again, they go back to sleep. So he says, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? At least one hour a day, you've got to first reach the target of praying and spending time in the presence of God. Why don't you shake someone and say, what? You cannot pray one hour. You can do it again. What? You cannot pray, God, pray to God for one hour. Some people feel like jumping out of the wall and running. One hour. In one minute is great for some people. But Jesus expected Peter to watch for one hour. Again, he struck against God's will. When they came to capture Jesus, he was out of sync, out of flow. Did not know what to do. Took out his sword and didn't even do the job properly. He just cut the ear. Thank God anyway, he cut the ear. Otherwise, it would have been another new miracle. We had cut off the neck then. I think Jesus must have put the head back. I do not know. But that would have been an amazing miracle. Peter didn't miss the mark. He chopped the head off, but Jesus took it and put it back. And that's, that man is still alive. Again, he denies three times, even after Jesus specifically telling him. He had a good heart, he had good intention. He wanted to do good things. He said, I will go with you even to death. Nothing, I will not leave you and all that. But then, when he's put in that spot, denies, denies. Mark chapter 14 was 66 onwards. Then he even begins to curse and to swear. And then after that, the rooster crows. And then what happens? Then he thinks about it and he starts crying. The heart is there, the intentions are there, but he does not have the power. You need that power of the Holy Spirit. I know all of you want to do good things. You got good decisions. You got good plans. You want to live for the Lord. You want to shine bright for Him in this dark world. But without the power of the Holy Spirit, it's not possible. That is, I need the Holy Spirit. Again, when Jesus was crucified and buried, what did they do? In John chapter 20, verse 19 onwards, it says that the doors were shut and the disciples were assembled inside for the fear of the Jews. Again, Peter looks at others. When Jesus is talking to him and saying, this is what you've got to do, Simon, son of Jonah. Do you love me? Then feed my sheep. And so Jesus tells him the things that will happen in his life. He should say, thank you, Lord, and leave it. No, but at once he looks at John. And then Peter, seeing John, said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? Again, he gets a slap on the face by Jesus. Jesus says to him in John chapter 21 or 22, if it were, if it if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. That's why God made it a commandment. You shall not covet. Look at someone on the left. Look at someone on the right. If only I had this. If only I had that. You follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll give you what others don't have. What you really need in your life. Again. He goes back to the old not only himself he takes everyone else goes back to the old life john chapter 21 verse 3 even after meeting jesus after resurrection what does he say he tells them i'm going fishing suddenly gets up and says i'm going fishing I'm going back to my old job then they said to him we are also going with you so they all went out the whole gang I went back fishing got in the boat caught nothing then jesus like oh comes and stands in the shore and asks them, children, have you any food? And they said, no. They didn't even know it was Jesus. And says, he tells them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they cast it and now they're not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. At once they were able to realize that it was Jesus. And said it is the Lord. As soon as they said it is the Lord, what happens to Peter? When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment and then he plunged into the sea. Jumped out of the boat into the water. He didn't know what to do. 
Because he's the one who's been the young leader taking them all away from doing the service of the Lord and keeping true to the call. But after the Holy Spirit, he sees such transformation in the life of Peter. He receives the power to preach boldly in Acts chapter 2, verse 14. Standing up with 11, he raised his voice and said to them, he was not shy, he was not afraid. Looking at the multitude, mocking, making fun of them in the upper room as they received the Holy Spirit. They said, all you seem to be drunk. You're all out of your mind. But he was not ashamed. That's the biggest problem when you live in the world. You got to have that power to be a witness. When they come and try to mock you and ridicule and cancel you saying, what is this? What is that about the Bible? What is it about? Oh, do you believe in abortion? Or do you believe in this kind of same-sex marriage or what you need the power of the holy spirit to stand up at that time and speak the truth and he spoke the truth at that time then again he received the power to heal when he and john went to the temple and there was this man who was lame from his mother's womb carried and laid there daily but peter looked at him and then he said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And so that man leaped and stood up and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. What a transformation. Now he's received the power to shine. Now the high priest and all the council catch them and throw them in jail he was afraid to even tell that servant girl that he was with Jesus they were not going to do anything to Peter but still he was afraid but now though they put them in jail to let them know what power they had over them at that time lock them up when they wanted and now they bring them out and they set them there in front of all these people hundreds of them standing and questioning them by what power or by what name have you done this an inquiry is going on. These are the people who murdered Jesus Christ. These are the people who can do that. Incite a riot and kill Peter also. If they want to. But was he afraid in front of them? But he shines in front of them. He, but Peter in Acts chapter 4 verse 8 says, Filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel. And he speaks so boldly that it says in verse 4, 13 Acts chapter 4 when they saw the boldness of Peter and John they perceived that they were uneducated untrained men they marveled they looked at Peter shining bright that's how you shine your light in this world when you overcome that pressure and that situation that the devil puts you in to oppress you and crush you and put out your lamp and your fire the fourth thing Peter received power for supernatural knowledge when someone came and lied to him in the church he was able to listen to the holy spirit ananias came and acted like he was giving everything but peter was able to listen to the holy spirit he knew immediately that's why it says in acts chapter 5 verse 3 ananias why has satan filled your heart to lie to the holy spirit it is because the holy spirit told him this is not the truth what he's doing he's doing it in front of the people but he had the boldness and the power to counter that lie not accommodate not allow that when the glory increases then the responsibility and accountability increases how many will be able to do that the many who are squeamish and will even collude and compromise and give up and even say a lie to cover up for someone else someone comes with authority and say where's this person say no no he was here till now he's just gone there then after the go call come come they're calling you but he was bold enough to put his finger on that and tell because he was able to listen to the holy spirit that is important for you to be able to listen to the holy spirit and receive supernatural knowledge in your life the fifth thing we can see in the Bible is that he had to re he received the power to heal even with a shadow that which is not even written about Jesus Christ 
that there's so many people who are sick that they brought them out and laid them on the streets in Acts chapter 5 verse 15 and put them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing might fall on some of them and a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem bringing sick people then those who were tormented by unclean spirits and they were all healed hallelujah what power that is all through the baptism of the Holy Spirit because he waited there he gave his heart and he followed the Lord and did all that the Lord Jesus Christ told him and the sixth thing we can see that he is the one the apostle was used to reach to the Gentiles with the power of the Holy Spirit he was the one who was sent by the Holy Spirit saying go to the first Gentiles house Cornelius and he listens he healed himself he sees that vision and he obeys and goes there to a place that he would normally not go and while he's still speaking there the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word and now we also are able to receive the first time the Holy Spirit was poured outside of the children of Israel outside of the children of Abraham and now we are also grafted in to the family of God and what did they do and they knew that they were all baptized with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 10 verse 46 because they heard them speak with tongues say that for they heard them speak with tongues that's how important it is it's not just for some few people to speak each and every one of you got to speak with tongues and finally we can see that this unlearned uneducated man who was a fisherman is able to say in second Peter chapter 3 verse 1 beloved I now write to you this second epistle it is all possible because what he says in second Peter chapter 1 he says Simon Peter born servant of the Apostle Jesus Christ and verse 3 he says grace and peace to you as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness why don't we all stand up he's able to now write a fisherman who not trained as a scribe but now he's able to write and he's telling you can receive all things focus on verse 3 in second peter chapter 1 verse 3 where it says as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness all things that pertain to your life his power is able to make you do and also for godliness lean on his power lean on the spirit of God have this advantage in your life the advantage of the power of the Holy Spirit to the baptism of the Holy Spirit Oh, if you want him to lead you and guide you, you want to draw closer to God this morning and have more of God in your life, more of the Spirit of God, more of His power. Why don't you lift up your hands even as all eyes are closed and say, Oh Lord, here I am. I need more of you in my life. I want more of your power, more of your presence. Lead me on, Spirit of the living God. Oh, that each and everyone here would hear your voice. They lead them and guide them. Yeah. We thank you, Lord, for your wonderful presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your word. Touch each and every one who listen to this, who yields himself to your word and to your call. Let them receive your supernatural touch and leading. In Jesus' name I ask, giving you all the glory all the honor all the power and all the praise why don't you clap your hands and thank and praise and exalt god this morning god bless you